Hello, welcome back to Hey Dads, Gay Dads. Today we are here with a personal friend of mine, Mark Denlevy, who is such an interesting and wonderful person. So Mark, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Tom, I'm psyched. Awesome. So Mark, you are not only the only blue angel I know, which means you're in this Navy flight demonstration team, but you are also a Top Gun graduate. So tell us a little bit about how you end up doing, doing both of those things and what it was like. <laughs> well, I was very lucky. Uh, but it all started when I was a kid, really. My dad was a naval officer, and we moved around and lived on naval air stations most of my life. So I was that little boy who rode his bike down to the flight line and watched the planes do touch and goes. And ever since then, I hoped uh, one day to uh, fly off of aircraft carriers, off of ships. And so uh, I was able to do that after graduating from the Naval Academy. And then uh, served overseas on uh, several uh, ships, and then eventually applied to uh, Top Gun. And didn't make it my first time and then finally made it the second time, went through, graduated, and then subsequent to that also applied to the Blue Angels and was able to get picked up my second time around as well and served with them for almost three years. Wow, Tom Cruise was not in your graduating class, right? No, he was not, that was yeah. a little before my time. <laughs> Great, so how many years did you actually spend in the military then? And if you don't mind me asking, what was it like being an enlisted gay man? I was um, a, a person who struggled a lot with my homosexuality and being gay. I was raised Catholic and it took me a long time to come to terms with it. So even though I think most of us can look back and go, gosh, I knew when I was eight or 10, uh, I can certainly do that now. But at the time I was trying my best to be uh, a straight man. And uh, so I went to the Naval Academy and I actually enlisted prior to that uh, for a year at uh, the Naval Academy Preparatory School and then did four years in Annapolis and uh, was struggling back then uh, with my identity. And then, um, not to get too into the weeds, but was engaged twice to women. And then eventually came to terms with um, who, part of who I am, which is a gay man. And uh, that was in my early 30s when I finally came to terms with that. Uh, and then as far as what was it like to be a gay man in the military, it was very challenging, especially as I was struggling with it personally. Don't Ask, Don't Tell uh, came into uh, being. And it was, uh, you know, you had to be closeted. Uh, I was lucky enough to meet some other closeted service members, uh, one of which was a mentor for me, and that helped immensely. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing that with us. Tell us about what you're doing now. I am a father and a husband. Those are uh, my top two jobs, and, uh, and I love them. I relish uh, playing those roles every day, as difficult as they can be. <laughs> and then my profession, I'm an airline pilot now. Greg, you and your husband, Greg, have such a beautiful family. Um, and also in terms of gay dad families, you also went through surrogacy, but there is definitely a uniqueness to that part of your family structure as well. So tell us a little bit about your family and how it all came to be. Well, both of us wanted children at a very young age. So uh, when we met, as I think a lot of couples, whether you're gay or straight, you start having those conversations about, how do you want kids? And immediately we both said yes. Uh, so that was checking the block there. And um, we thought about adoption and opted for surrogacy and went through an agency in LA. Um, and then as far as I think the uniqueness you're describing, we, we have a mixed race family. And we um, it's such a unique position to be in when you are a gay man and you know that uh, for us, we'd hope to that we would have a, a child that was mine and a child that was Greg's. And uh, then you have to pick uh, the uh, genes of the woman, in this case, the egg donor. So we just tried to pick the best person uh, that we thought would give our ch children the best chance uh, at success in life. And uh, it was interesting. We went to two separate rooms, two separate computers, and said, all right, pick your top three. And we, there were quite a few women to choose from. And all three were what you would probably term uh, ethnic. And we had a lot of discussions about what it meant to be not only uh, a, a gay male couple having children, but then also possibly now mixed race children and what were the ramifications of that. So there are a lot of in-depth conversations before we selected uh, the egg donor who is um, African-American. It's safe to say that you used to live a pretty wild and maybe maybe even dangerous life in the sky. So how does life now as a dad <laughs> compare in terms of wildness? <laughs> <and all? laughs> well, let's put it this way. I, I have come to the realization that I lack patience, which I never thought I did, and time management and the value of sleep and the value of time management have just come to a head as a parent. I, I'm sure every parent feels similarly, but yes, it's um, very, it's anathema to what I did before as far as uh, flying fighters off of ships, 
but it is in a lot of ways much more challenging than anything I've ever done in my life, but much more rewarding as well. So yeah, as cliche as that sounds. I'm sure there's so many guys out there watching these videos, this particular interview now, and they're contemplating is being a dad right for me? And am I ready for such a huge change in life? So what would your response or advice be to them? I, I think you, you want children. If, uh, really want them, and if you do want them, then that when the when those challenges come about, and they will, um, you'll get through it, and and you'll just be so grateful that you have these amazing human beings that you're responsible for, as daunting as that can be at times. And it's a brave new world. I think don't be afraid to do it because of society, of what society, uh, the, the old societal norms, because those have been broken. And um, you know, it's two steps forward, one step back a lot of times in this country. But the the trend is is in the right direction people will realize that, hey, we're just parents, just trying to do the best we can raising our children. And the other thing is try to find a support network. You know, we, we chatted about this a little earlier. One of our goals as parents, Tom, I know you feel the exact same way, is you want your children to see other families that look like theirs. But I guess my advice would be uh, don't let people tell you no just because you're gay. Awesome. That, those days are gone. I agree. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your time and thanks for being a great dad and setting an example for so many others as well and for telling your story. I'm messing it up every day, Tom, but I'm, I'm doing my best. <laughs> thanks, Tom. I really appreciate it.